How, how many books are there? There, there are four watches, there are 15, right? 15 volumes will be there. The last, we end with independence. Uh, we end, then the last volume is the Bombay plan. And the question before the person who's writing that text, Medha Kudaisya, she's in the university at Singapore, NUS, in the National University. And uh, the question I've posed to her is, how could somebody, a, a, a group who was in charge of the, writing the Bombay plan, which included G.D. Birla, J.R.D. Tata, how could they come with a statist plan which gave so much power to the state? To the state. I mean, we forget that our first five-year plan, second five-year plan had it their origins during the Second World War, in the 40s, mid-40s, when these people were deliberating and they were charged by Nehru to create a plan. And they created a socialist plan. And, and how did that happen? Well, we'll find out <laughs> when the book... Uh, when, 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 when the book uh, well, what, what's the next book in the series? Well, the next three volumes that we are coming out in 2013, mid-2013. Um, we're going to get about three to four every six months. And the, the next three volumes are going to be, one is on the Kachi trade, uh, the Golden Triangle. Another one is the Mouse Merchant. Another one is by Himanshu Ray, who has taken a a Sanskrit text uh, written in Guj it's a it's it's Gujarati uh, language, but it's it's a it's a it's a Sanskrit text, uh, Lekha Padati, and she has taken this and described the life of the Gujarati merchants and the Jewish merchants that they encountered in the, the it's the it's the Ara 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 Arabian Sea adventure. The, whereas this one was the South Indian. That's right, yeah. The trade to South India. The Himanshu's text is about Western, the West Coast of, uh, of, of, of India. And, uh, you know, the, the, for me, the, the, the question that in a sense triggered of this project was that... 64 countries did the same reforms that India did. But why is it that India became the second fastest growing economy in the world in the last decade? And nobody has been able to give me a satisfactory answer. But my own politically incorrect answer is that we had in India the good fortune of having merchant castes, trading communities, business communities, and they were all over. They were Hindus, Muslims, Parsis, Jews, and we had, so we have the Sindhis, we have the Punjabi Khatris in the north, we have the, the great Banyas, the North Indian Banyas, That's the right. Agarwals, the mm. Guptas, we have the Marwadis, the biggest risk takers of all. And we have, of course, the Nagar Brahmins in Ahmedabad, and we have um, in Surat. Surat, you know, was an amazing... Before Bombay, Surat was the great yeah, trading... Yeah, it was the port. center of gravity. Center of gravity. Yeah. The Mughal Empire, it was Bandar Mubarak, as they would call it. And that's where they used to go to the Hajj from Surat. But... Surat, merchants of Surat used to finance the British trade to China. I mean, they were like the Lloyds of London of that, of that time. So you have these merchants operating through Surat. And it's interesting that how <clears throat> Surat declines as Bombay rises and why Surat declines. It's a very interesting story because it's the decline of the Mughal Empire, and the rise of the Marathas, and the fight of the Marathas and the British that really Surat got caught in. And luckily for Bombay, it was able to entice the merchants of Surat to Bombay. 
And so we, you have these, uh, uh, the fact that we had Chetiars and we had Parsis, if you do reforms in a society where people know how to conserve capital. Where there is a predisposition to. There's a predisposition. They, it's very hard. Not only is it hard to make money, but it's hard to keep money. You see, that was the lesson from the mouse merchant. That's right. And so if you have communities whose DNA is that, who've learned it over centuries, then you have an advantage yes, as a country. So, so the much reviled caste system may have come to our aid when it came to the, the rise, economy. The, yeah. e the economic rise of, uh, of, 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 of India. And, and uh, so instead, I mean, the merchant does not get good press, you know. Uh, even today, that's true. Even today. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was very interesting for me to see the left shedding crocodile tears for the merchants during the FDI. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these, uh, these leftists were the ones who wanted to nationalize the grain trade in 71, you will remember. So you, 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 you see we've come a full circle, how, it's, how it suits your, the democratic uh, mood to bring down the government. They'll do anything, these, uh, these, these, these politicians. On that note, Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to reading the other books. Well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for, 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 for having me. Thank you.